Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Transatlantic Splatoon League. We are in the European Division today. It is week three, and a match that I know a lot of people have been highly anticipating. We've been waiting to see Radiance make their first appearance in Tassel, and it's coming today. They're going up against Rift. Of course, my name is Kbot, and I am joined by Rissa for her first broadcast as well. How are you doing? I'm doing good on this uh, Sunday morning, well, afternoon now. But yeah, I'm excited to be here for this match, especially as my first Tassel event to watch and commentate. Should be a lot of fun. By the way, like, Mike is sounding crisp, by the way. Really? I, I was wondering. <laughs> it, it sounds really good. It sounds really cool. good to me. Um, but of course, uh, if you all are just joining us, first of all, you probably know me because you're copied doing this whole copy pasta thing in the chat, which is all well and good. Um, but uh, the Trades of the Nations 2 League features five of the best teams in North America and five of the best teams in Europe. Uh, and I should now say four of the best teams in North America, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, regardless, um, this is going to be the fourth match of ten in the European competition. And this is going to be the first match of Radiance. Radiance is probably one of the favorited teams, uh, but this is almost set up to be like an Alliance Rogue Civil War here, Ressa, which I think is going to be really fun to watch. I know. I think it's going to be really fun. I know that, like, us as the analysis, all picked um, Radiance to win this, but I know a lot We've of also, people... We're also 0 for 2 this entire week so far. I know. So... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we're kind of slacking here, so... Uh, but I know that, you know, Rift, of course, is made up of a ton of very strong players, and they have been uh, definitely working together, so this could go either way. Very much could go either way. And so, by the way, on that note of uh, kind of what's going on, in case you're just kind of joining us, this is what actual overlays look like. I know a lot of you just came from the other stream uh, where you saw some... A, a very well-produced studio uh, that was rented out there by the casters over in Europe. But uh, here, we've just got our virtual broadcasts and actual stream overlays, so you can tell what's going on here. Uh, you'll notice on that side, way over there, uh, you'll see the map list. And so the way the maps work... Uh, <laughs> yeah. The way the maps work is uh, the first, fourth, and seventh maps are neutral picks. The second, fifth, and eighth maps are all higher seed picks. And the third, sixth, and ninth maps are all uh, lower seed picks. It looks like I might have got something incorrect. Uh... Uh... Anyway, take that away and talk with the teams while I figure out what's going on. <laughs> All right, taking it away. So first off, um, I did want to note that the first map that we're going to be playing here on stream is Splat Zones, The Reef. And I, I know I always say this. I feel like I'm like a broken record every time I mention this map um, in particular, no matter what the mode is, I feel like whoever can get to the main bridge, the middle bridge here is going to be starting off the match and setting the tone I feel like for the entire match but so we're gonna start out here first map and mode together will be splat zones on the reef and it looks like we have uh, we got the lobby up we're all sitting here looks like the players are picking their last weapons and yeah yeah um I think I've got this one right it's a little weird with the map picking format because a lot of the times the teams just like kind of say their three maps uh, and then I'm like left to try to splice it together and figure out what's going where exactly. Um, so I think this is right. I think this is right. Uh, I think it was just okay. a little bit of an order change. Um, there they are. You see them on screen. As you mentioned, Splat Zones the Reef is a classic to start things off. Um, and it's going to be a, lar a large part of, you know, what's going to come out of bridge bridge control here. It'll also be kind of interesting to see exactly what kind of play style that Radiance decides to opt for. Again, we haven't seen them yet in the Transatlantic Splatoon League. We've seen teams that are rather aggressive. We've seen teams that are rather safe. We'll see which side of the ball that Radiance decides to play uh, as they ex were expecting them to be one of the favorites here overall in the league. We're going to kick this one underway, and we already see something a little bit quirky here. Alexei going over to the Dynamo. Yeah, that was the first thing I noticed. Bam, Dynamo, and, it, and it's the gold Dynamo. So on the side, 
Um, on that side, they are going to be running a double armor comp, which I definitely think is a way, interesting way to start out this map in particular, as we see Zekin help getting uh, that spot there. And now it's just the Bandu up on, um, on that side as they jump out. It's a three down situation there, and you'll notice the Rift is already starting to take control of a large portion of the map. While they might not have built up a ton of map control, they're already starting to put pressure on uh, the Radiance right now, who is going to have a little bit of difficulty trying to trickle out from their spawn. Although Kipper coming in from the flank and trying to get something done here as well on this end zap is going to find the assist on the one with that incomer. But right now, Radiance still isn't quite, you know, clearing all their corners, and they're going to have to do that here rather quickly. It's a two down situation they might want to take advantage of, but they're really not pushing too far forward. They're taking their time to make sure everything's cleared out, but they might get punished for it. Yeah, I didn't even notice Alexa here on the bridge, holding the bridge with that dynamo, getting that pick on Kiver. And Kiver wasn't quite able to push up and help get their teammates up in the zone, which is uh, very unfortunate for them. But finally, it looks like Radiance has gotten control of the zones, which is very good, because now they're giving that little bit of penalty to Rift as there's a fight here for the zone with uh, Gray. And looks like Gray is going to go ahead and have help from their teammates and finally get the zone cap again as uh, each team both has three up on their bomb. And now here comes the push coming in from Rift as they start coming forward with the incomer. You'll notice Alexi taking dominating presence here on the bridge. Is trying to is gonna force Gray into baller. It's gonna get taken out by another teammate there. And it's a three-line situation as Rift perhaps overextends slightly. Radiance is gonna be able to clean this one up here, but it's looking like they're not gonna go for a strong lockout hold. They're just gonna kind of maintain control around zone and make sure uh, that they can try to pick people off as they come in. But Kiver going down is gonna be huge, it means they're not gonna have the armor for this next engagement. Yeah, and it looks like finally Radiance has been able to kind of work to get some map control, but just in time for that Booyah Bomb to come in right at the bridge, which is that crucial part of this map that leads to getting control. And um, right now there's a fight for the zones right now, and the scores are very close. Both teams have very similar penalties right now. So um, as we see this nice 2v1 being uh, taken on um, on the right side here of the map, uh, Zekin going to have to back up with all the missiles on them and right now Radiance has done a good job at getting back control of the zone as it keeps kind of going back and forth. Hey, you notice that, you know, you mentioned that the scores are rather close, and I think that's in large part because Radiance is doing a good job of just keeping control of the zone when these, uh, when this game state is in more of a neutral stance. You'll notice a lot of the time that we've spent for the past minute or so has been largely with multiple members down on both teams, and so in these neutral situations, it's largely been Radiance that's been able to hold on to these zones, but now they're starting to get a little more contested as Rift starts to push forward underneath this bridge. Urza's going to try to sweep on around, and instead is going to play a little bit more safe, try to back up here from the stall for a little bit more uh and well you know actually wait a minute that was just a wipe how i don't even know where that came from to be honest uh but you'll notice what kind of positioning that radiance is going to take now they're really going to go for the lockout here yeah finally radiance here they don't have the lead quite yet but they are extremely close so finally radiance is starting to paint around the map um work to get some specials ready as a counter push here and applying pressure in the street area which is very important as they finally go ahead and take the lead and as they take the lead they're gonna take three members of rift along with that and looks like that's a complete wipe as finally radiance has played the patient game here played the waiting game and is in a great position Great position now, and honestly, it's going to take a miracle here for Rift to come back from this one. Skozy goes to the Ink Judge, try to find a pick from afar, but can't quite seem to find it. And right now, there's no one to paint the zone. You'll notice trying to paint the zone with this Ink Jet for the L3D would have been a better weapon choice for that. Two down situation right now for Rift. Skozy is going to turn around to get one, uh, but what at what cost? Trying to stall for this zone here, trying to keep it a little bit more neutral. Buy time for the respawns to come in from Rift, but right now, it's all about Radiant shutting down the jumps that are coming on in. Another two down situation, make it a three down situation for Rift that is going to be the final closing knockout in favor of Radiance. Wow, I loved the way, like, as I had said there, that Radiance really pay played the patient game. They knew, that's one of those things where you know you don't have the lead necessarily maybe the first half of the match, but if you play it patiently, you work together to get specials and get in good positions like that, and then all of a sudden, bam, they just took it from all the way down to 100. I'm uh, sorry, down to zero. Yeah, I mean, again, sometimes it does it doesn't really take these like really massive pushes all at once, right? Sometimes it's about extending things out further and further and playing the game where you're able to pick off opponents one by one as they start coming into the zone and I think there was just a point where Radiance started to get a 
bunch of control all around the map and they were really just able to shut things down and rift couldn't do a ton of everything or it would have taken a much more coordinated push than what they had to offer in that given instance and they just really weren't able to find uh, all of the eggs in one basket yeah and then finally once you know radiance got control of that mid bridge and they had two i didn't see who specifically was but there were two players on that mid bridge they held it and then it just spiraled from there so enough of that first match we're going to be going into game two which is going to be rainmaker on uh snapper canal these players readied up real fast like <laughs> yeah they did do, do, do you want to like Take a moment to think about that, or are we just going to hop right into it? Looks like we are doing just that. Hypnos, you'll notice, going on over to the Jet Squelcher. Uh, hasn't pulled out the Charger yet. Granted, not really Charger maps that we've seen so far, but that's something to keep your eye on as we go forward. And already, the Ray Duel that we're going to see so often in this match looks like it's going to be won by Hypnos here as Alexei is trying to run away. Yeah, I love that both teams picked that Jet Squelcher, so there are going to be tons of raid battles going on here, as Radiance is the first team to go ahead and grab the Rainmaker and start pushing it through this right side. Lexi going to have to back up and maybe think about getting a Ray ready for this, uh, to defend this, but it looks like Zekin is able to help push up with Alexi, so that way they can stop the Rainmaker. Yeah, well done there by Rift to kind of swarm around and take care of Gray on that Raymaker. was kind of uh, unsupported by the rest of the team, but Rift is able to capitalize on that, force Gray in the corner and take out the Raymaker. And now it's in a little bit of a tough position for Radiance to really get to without first getting picked. You'll notice Obido trying to, you know, be a little more aggressive here. And there's going to be enough of a distraction to allow Radiance to come in to pick up that Raymaker as they start moving forward. The Stingray, though, is going to come on through to shut down this push. Yeah, there's a lot going on here too. Oh, oh unfortunately, Obito going for a swim there. Um, on that left side, there's just been so much going on. And uh, looks like Rift is doing a great job at not letting Radiance get to the Rainmaker. And I thought they might reset it, but they're actually going to go ahead and looks like uh, Rift is going to pick up the Rainmaker. And they're going to start pushing it through this mid path through the street. But just in time for the Stingray to come out and stop that Rainmaker push. Zekin just kind of dives in there, perhaps a little bit of miscommunication, wasn't really supported with the rest of the ink coverage from the rest of the team. Now Alexi is going to come back with a ray and is going to find one. Doesn't matter because the pop's going to go to the other direction. There's no one else here really for Rift to continue this push on forward. And it's just going to kind of, uh, looks like it's going to be maintained here. Alexi tries to step forward, but it's going to get taken out by Hypnos on the Jet Squelcher duel. Didn't expect to actually see the main weapons come out here, but nonetheless, they do. Uh, so once again, as we look at the rest of this game state, it is probably favoring Radiance right now, but neither one of these teams has an extremely strong push yet, and it can be one mistake or one wipe that could completely change this game. Yeah, uh, we can see both teams kind of kind of working to get their specials ready, though two go down on both sides here, so, but I like that Hypnos has that Ray ready, they backed up, and they are ready just in case Rift decides to pick up the Rainmaker. Kiver pulling out this uh, tricky 1v1 here with Urza, gonna go ahead and lose that 1v1 as Urza starts pushing up here into the snipe. And they are putting points on the board as they as Rift goes ahead and pushes the Rainmaker and gets it all the way to 27. Is going to take the lead uh, with that nice little push there. Well done, indeed. You'll notice Alexei playing much more conservatively. is able to pick off Kipper and now has the Stingray. Should he opt to try to take care of this and at least buy some more time here? Again, Splatoon oftentimes is a matter of seconds here. Has that Stingray at the ready now in order to shut this down, but looks like it doesn't even need the rest of the support from this team. And it is going to mean... Uh, another three down situation though actually for Radiance and so Rift is just going to keep building up momentum here. Again, it's the Radiance map pick. You'll know they want to come away with a win here, but they might not be given the opportunity. Hypnos has a Stingray to shove it back the other direction. That's going to be a two down situation for Rift and perhaps a little bit of a semblance of control around this Rainmaker for Radiance. Can they convert this into a push? Yeah, uh, Radiance is having kind of a difficult time stopping these continuous pushes that are going on. Um, I love that Hypnos continuously has Rays ready as we see Hypnos painting around, making sure, getting a nice fix on uh, Jose there, um, painting for that Ray, gonna get that Ray ready again. There are two down on Rift right now as Radiance is in control of that Rainmaker. So, looks like they're gonna go ahead and opt to push it this left way, and uh, looks like the Ray battle is happening, and Hypnos has unfortunately lost that Ray battle. Another member goes down on the side of Radiance here as um, there's so much going on here on this left side. 
It's an absolute ink bath, but it looks like it's going to come in favor of Radiance. It's, it's a three-down situation for Rift right now. So goes the last one in the air and is going to find the Star Wars battle onto Kiver. Uh, guarding this area right now, Greymaker now finds another one onto Hypnos. That ink jet seemed to last forever, but it was absolutely massive here as Rift continues to just stall things out. They don't want to let Radiance pick up the Greymaker. They don't want to give them another opportunity to take back control of this game, but it looks like they might have just done that. It is going to be the explosion here, and Gray picks it up. It's another two-down situation. Alexei trying to step on forward with his cousin Jess Culture, but it's going to go down to a Raymaker shot. You'll notice that Rift is backing up a little bit. They want Radiance to approach them, and they know that it's already down to the 27-point mark, so they can buy a little bit more time. They can build up their specials, but here comes the Stingray from uh, Hypnos here. Urza goes down, and that's going to be the front line down. Ray is going to take the lead for Radiance into the three-down situation for Rift. The Luxi is the last one alive right now. Radiance is able to find this at the very end. And they're going to step on the pedestal. Not able to find the knockout, but it almost doesn't even matter. It's overtime, but look at how much you have to go. You have to get to the complete opposite side of the map. It's a two-down situation. You have 60 seconds to do it. Can they pull it off? I don't know if they can pull this off. This is crazy. My jaw is literally dropped right now that they took the lead and pushed it that far in overtime. As we're seeing Hypno pop right? up with that Stingray, the GG oh. Ray potentially. And yes, that Ray from Hypnos is going to go ahead and get Zixen, Zekin holding the Raymaker and uh, going to go ahead and stop that overtime. Push. Oh boy. My jaw was literally dropped that whole time. That was crazy. That was... That was something else. <laughs> that was that was that that was that was something else. Uh, Radius is able to walk away with the victory there. I mean, is there anything to even comment on? I think that like at the end of the day, Radiance just seemed rather calm, cool, and collected, right? Um, during that entire last push, right? They were able to like, okay, we can buy for a little bit more time. We'll wait when everyone's ready. We'll wait when we have the Stingray up. That Stingray can start trying to find picks or at least find information on where some of these players are. And once we get one down, we can start moving forward. Yeah, I mean, just like, even even the first map we saw, not to that degree necessarily, but just the patient game that Radiance has for moments like that is just crazy, because I feel like I would buckle under that type of pressure. So, just the way Gray over there on the left side was doing a great job at holding the Raymaker and not rushing in, waiting for their teammates, I think that really helped out um, just the, the way that they were able to have that patience to wait. So by the way, we're not even allowed to like build up hype for the next game before we get into the game, apparently, because these players just want to go. It's Tower Control Piranha Pit here. <laughs> it is going to be the Rift map pick. They were so close to pulling away a victory last time. We'll see if they can do it here. Uh, and, I mean, a rapid deco, actually, coming out of Erza here, which is something we don't see very often, but something that uh, Erza has played a little bit of. That's a interesting, but also good pick for uh, Tower Control, specifically for this map. As we see one go down on the side of Radiance already. Now it looks like there's going to be another member down. Oh my gosh, right as I'm saying that, three down on the side of Radiant. So, um, looks like Rift here is in a great position as they're starting to push to that first checkpoint and getting jumps to the tower and getting their specials ready to get a really strong push in here. It's already going to be this first checkpoint, uh, but now, I mean, wait a bit. I don't even understand why this engagement's happening here. Urza's Popsy Inkjet here. That I think some of the members of Radiance were just trying to charge up their specials, but Urza had a keen eye and was watching that location. It's going to result in the second checkpoint going down for Rift as they continue pushing this tower lower and lower, already at the 23-point mark here as Gray's looking to try to do something, trying to find this engagement. is going to find one on Descoze. Alexei shooting shots here from the top conveyor belt, but it's a two-down situation for Rift right now, which means maybe a semblance of Radiance to come back from this one means a three down situation a two down the other direction which means radiance is going to have less time to build up a stronghold on the rest of the map uh, um finally radiance is starting to be able to push this tower back into mid that was an insane push from rift in the first minute as we're seeing uh Skoze here pushing up trying to take on it looks like a 2v uh one there and as that happened with alexi's ray here there's a complete wipe on the side of Radiance. So again, Rift is in a great position here to get back on the tower, push it back on Radiance's side of the map, and get more of a push in. It feels like Rift have just prepared on this map specifically. You notice the positions that Alexei is taking, what uh, Urza is doing by watching the right side as Alexei gets another one onto Gray. It's a three down situation once more for Radiance. Hypnos is the last one alive here and is getting pressured by an inkjet. Can't do much on the bamboozler nonetheless here and just gonna try to run away. The 10 missiles come through, but at what cost? I mean, there's absolutely nothing that Radiance can do in order to get back around this tower. The Stingray comes out here even once again for Alexei to continue finding some of these members of Radiance. And now it's a two 
gun situation as Skoze is trying to go for a flank here. Uh, but it looks like it is going to be the end of the push. We'll see if Skoze can come up with something big to stall things out. Uh, but no, it is going to go down nonetheless. Yeah, Skoze there for a moment, uh, acting as a good distraction there. Does go down though, but that's okay because Rift was able to get the tower back on Radiance's side of the map, which is really, really good for them. It's making it that much harder for Radiance to be able to push the tower on uh, to Rift's side of the map. So um, here, the, uh, Skoze uh, again popping up with that inkjet with Urza. I like the double inkjet going on here uh, that they paired with the armor. And uh, looks like Skoze going to go down though, as finally Gray on the tower is starting to push it to that first checkpoint. And finally uh, Radiance is starting to get a push in. Time to build up a little bit of momentum here for Radiance. We'll see how quickly they can round this corner, what they have prepared. The incomer comes their direction as Obito's trying to get some follow-up damage and try to be a little bit pesky for Alexei to take care of, especially given that angle. But already it's a 200 situation. The bunch of ink was dumped down on that tower. And now Rift is in control right now of this area. It's going to be a push stop for Radiance. They're going to have a couple more opportunities to do it. But right now, the defense from Rift is looking very strong. Yeah, Rift uh, defense is definitely really good. They have their specials ready as we see this inkjet pop up. I see a Stingray online too ready just in case. Um, great double there um, on Rift. And then Radiance is able to start pushing the tower again as Hypnos is on the tower with that banter. Like side goes down, that means the Stingray is not going to be available here for Rift to come on back in to this one and try to prevent this defense here from taking care of business. Uh, the Stingray is about to be charged up here as Alexei has respawned since then, but that was crucial to not have at that moment. And now Urza is just trying to be, again, nuisance. Look at how much work this Rapid is doing and making sure that Radiance just cannot step on this tower. They don't feel safe, and now the Inkjet goes up in the air. Hypnos tries to shoot it down with a laser, but can't quite seem to find that one. And... Radiance, what can you do? You just back away here instead. They're trying to go again as the special rotation has been exhausted from Rift. We'll see if they can get anything done on their side. Looks like Skoze going down here to the inkjet. Urza trying to find this as well, but it's just dipping and diving around the shots. It's three around the tower for Radiance, and it looks like they come out of this firefight, which is going to be a push, but they're going to need at least one more team fight to win in order to take this game. Yeah, Radiance here in a really good position, getting an, essentially a full life on Rift as they start trying to get it through uh, this uh, first checkpoint, second checkpoint area. And I think in this corner, these armors from both teams are so crucial. Right now, Radiance has to get in a good position, though. Unfortunately, Hypnos goes down here in the last tower. point of overtime, and the spike for tower is just nonstop. Non-stop, Kipper trying to get on it, but Zekin's going to be able to there to shut it down. And Rift finally gets one on the board on the map that they picked and a map that they certainly had prepared. Yeah, I remember uh, watching them on the first set and seeing how good they did on this map in Love 2. So definitely, it shows that they knew their positioning. They knew exactly what everyone needed to do. And I feel like the armors there in that corner for both teams, I kept noticing how difficult the armors were making it for everyone on both sides. I mean, Radiance just didn't seem to have an answer to get it around the defense that Rift was providing there around that mm -hmm. conveyor belt, right? It, there was always an armor. There were always weird angles that just could not quite be found. And Radiance really didn't have an answer for <laughs> what the defense positions or even offense positions that Rift was taking earlier in that game. Um, so well done, once again. Good map awareness there. I really liked, by the way, if we like flash back to like three or four minutes ago, um, Erza was watching that right side. He knew that there were going to be a couple of members of Radiance to try to come up from that side to charge their specials. So even though that Erza wasn't exactly on the tower, and perhaps you'd think, okay, you want to ex escort the tower, but if there was at least one person watching and able to find the engage onto unsuspecting members of Radiance who thought they were just going to be able to charge their special towards the useless side of the map for free. Once again, these teams are riding up so quickly, and I can't even break down much of what's happened. We're going to Rainmaker on Black Belly Skate Park here uh, for this one. Uh, game four course ratings up 2-1 on Rift. Rift looking to even the score here on a neutral map. Yeah, right away we're seeing Radiance come out with two ends up. So that means two armors right off the bat. Only one armor on the side of Rift here, but that is completely okay. I do like too that we're seeing both teams have the jet squelchers ready, gonna have those stingrays ready as Alexei immediately almost heard what I was saying, has this ray ready, gonna pop it. And right now it's a fight for mid to see who can get the 
Someone's gonna have to explain to me at a later time why we're deciding to run double ink armor on Rainmaker. I feel like that's not exactly the best use of our weapons, but we'll see if it pays off here for Radiance. As Alexi gets one here, looking for the second, it's going to be plenty down all on the map. Radiance is gonna find the pop here, but at least it was Alexi is doing a fantastic job of stalling for time, making sure that Radiance doesn't pick this up and making sure this push doesn't get completely out of control. Yeah, Alexi did do a great job at stalling that as they waited for their teammates to come up. Um, unfortunately, Alexi went down there. Hypnos, though, gonna go ahead and grab the Rainmaker and was thinking about taking it left, it looked like, but it looks like it's gonna play it a little more safe, come back to mid, wait for their teammates, maybe wait for some specials. And Urza, though, popping up here with that Kensa Pro, getting a pick on Hypnos, holding that Rainmaker. And now the Rainmaker really hasn't moved much. It's still in mid. It looks like there's still just, you know, specials coming out from both teams as they're fighting to see who can get those picks first to get a push in. And again, neither team has gone completely down. That's why we're in much more of a stalemate situation. I want to see a little bit more aggressive. I want to see you start to take advantage and start to snowball, especially when you have the armor. And it looks like Radiance might have found that opening. It's a two-down situation once they pop that income. They're going to start to take this up on this right side here, and they're just running for it. Gray goes down here right in the hands of the second on this junior, but second gets taken down the other way. Kiver is going to go down here to Arizona, which means that Rift is going to maintain control of the area around the Rainmaker. And so Rift is going to stop this push, uh, but down to 34 here. Not terrible but also not bad. Yeah, this map definitely for Rainmaker. The Rainmaker can get pushed really, really fast. So those are really good points to be on the board, but Radiance is going to have to definitely be on the defense if they want to make sure that the push doesn't go any further than that. As two, three go down on the side of Rift right now as they try to grab the Rainmaker and put it potential push in. Looks like that's a full right for Rift, uh, Rift as Radiance has grabbed the Rainmaker again and is going to have a veto here leading the charge as they start pushing up and uh, trying to push the Rainmaker back on this side. We know exactly what took out that Rainmaker though. I think it might have been Alexi on the Jet Squelcher. It's a three down situation for Radiance and they're going to look to try to propel this forward. Uh, the Incomer comes out here, but there's no one around to really engage upon, and so now Rift is going to try to bend through some of these members of Radiance. Ray goes down here a little bit early. The Stingray duel is on the map. The Stingray is targeting second one, that Rainmaker, and it's going to go down here. 44 to 34. It came so close, Rift was, but now with the two-down situation, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to build off of this push. Yeah, I like that uh, right here, Radiance grabs the Rainmaker instead of letting it reset because just in case someone snuck up and pushed the Rainmaker around that, now they're going to go ahead and take it through this right alley Zekin. here. Uh, Zekin tried to sneak up Urza this uh, uh, flank around here on the right side as the Rainmaker is pushing. No one was there to be able to directly stop it. It looks like that Ray and uh, Skoze uh, was able to go back and help stop the Rainmaker. That was very, very good points for Radiance to get on the board. And well done to be realizing that right now Rift didn't have anyone back. They weren't in caught off in weird positions on the map. And so it allowed for a straight shot down to that nine point mark near that pedestal. We'll see once more what the response from Rift is. But they're going to have to fend through many of these members of Radiance who are already starting to approach them. Second goes down with the Rainmaker with not a lot of paint coverage around this fish. And now again, 75 seconds here left in the game to go. Rift still hasn't quite shown a fantastic push and a good ability to uh, take care of any of the mistakes that Radiance is making, but then again, what kind of mistakes is Radiance making? Perhaps you might call one there for Gray as Gray goes down. There's going to be control over to Rift here. They're going to pick with this Rainmaker, and here comes the Ink Armor. Here comes the Ink Jet. Kiver is forced to try to stay away here, and that's going to be one member taken out of this fight. Second tries to step on forward, but down to the 18 point mark. Taken down by Obido's Splat Bomb. It's a three done situation for Rift, and they're not going to find it on this push. Yeah, just goes in here trying to maybe potentially wait for jumps, maybe potentially, you know, be able to sneak this Rainmaker through. But Radiance knew that Skoze was still there. Radiance has grabbed the Rainmaker. That was really smart because they could have, if someone snuck in through there and grabbed that, that could have been it for them. So Radiance going to go ahead and just take the Rainmaker as far away from their pedestal as they can here through this right side as Kiver is holding the Rainmaker. Uh, Rift here trying to regroup on this left side as uh, that Ray's going to come out to help stop that Rainmaker. So now Rift is going to have to try and regroup here in the last 15 seconds. And regroup is going to be very difficult to get in the fact that they don't have very many specials. The only one they have is the Inkjet from Skoze, but it needs to target the Stingray as soon as possible. It doesn't even matter. Zekin's going to get taken down. There's another one taken down here for Rift, and now they're going to try to pop this barrier. All that has to happen for Radiance is they stall for time on the barrier, and that's exactly what they do. They're going to go up 3-1 to one after taking that game. That was so... That was... Okay, so Radiance definitely had the lead there for most of the time, but right there at the end, that got so close all the way down to 18 for Rift. So, um, 
both teams definitely were really good about their stingrays and trying to have specials online, but uh, Radiance did a great job there with that really strong push. Yeah, they did. I mean, again, that's one of those things that you're going to have to go back and watch because, you know, mm -hmm. like, and especially when we get the overhead uploaded on the Tassel YouTube channel, hashtag shameless plug. Um, but one of the things you'll probably notice is that Rift is all scattered all across the map. And what Radiance realizes is that, hey, given the fact that there's no one right in front of this pedestal, we can just take it. We can start running. They get it down to that nine point mark. And that's ultimately what wins them the game. Uh, but in true fashion so far in this match we should probably start talking about the next map already uh it is going to be tower control a new albacore hotel which is the radiance pick and uh one of the things that new albacore hotel is kind of known for is being one of those maps that requires a little bit more long range here rissa mm -hmm. yeah i know that whenever i play uh this map with my team it's always on everyone's minds you want to have long range so if this is radiance's pick i'm wondering what they're gonna uh, come out with as the match is gonna go ahead and start here we're gonna see what weapons everyone has gonna see what weapons here hypnos is finally gonna pick up that charger as well as alexi we talk about a little bit more of that range and those chargers are gonna bring it uh doesn't look like we see a lot of other adaptation except i say that and i see kiver is switched over to the custom dually squelchers uh double cds here Double for this competition. CDS. Wow, that's that is uh, that's definitely some range to add to that. So I like I like this, uh, this where this is going. So we're gonna have to see what happens though. As that Pensa Rapid uh, Blaster on the side of Radiance is already down, Rift is gonna go ahead and grab the tower here and start pushing up. As Skoze here has their inkjet ready, might go ahead and pop it here as the Stingray pops out as well. Stingray does come on through. Gray is going to try to find a little bit more of an engagement, but right now you don't have a lot of paint coverage with that Kenza Rapid Blaster, and Gray is going to go down here for Radiance. Kiffer is going to try to get something here with a little bit more fancy footwork on these duelies, which is some play that I know I haven't personally seen in a hot minute, but Rift right now is still kind of around this tower, and they're going to keep pushing on through here. Uh, Kiffer is going to find one on Alexa. He immediately gets taken down by Zekin here, and now the Junior Duel is going to go in favor of Obito. I said Junior Duel, but I really meant Splat Bomb Duel. Whatever the case is, Rift goes completely down. That'll be the wipe, and now perhaps Radiance will start to build up a little bit more momentum here. Yeah, Obito going to go ahead and start painting up this left side, getting their uh, rain ready as they got jumps for their teammates as well. Hypnos is going to go ahead and take the tower as... Uh... As uh, Obito is noticing this uh, Rapid Blaster in mid, and th er that was Urza. Urza doing a great job at as acting as a distraction because that helped aid to a complete wipe on the side of Radiance there. So now Rift is in a good position to be able to take tower again, pop these specials again, and start pushing the tower. Two down situation already for Radiance. This goes, is going to look for one more. The dodge away there from Hypnos in that Stingray. And Hypnos actually on the tower right now and riding it forward for a Rift here. They are going to finally hit this second checkpoint, but now it's already a two down situation. We've turned attention back to the tower. Gray is already approaching this tower and is going to take care of business over there. Skoze on this flank, but it's not really going to mean much of anything if your team has already lost the tower. It might prevent Radiance from really getting anything done. And once again, we see this more scrappy, neutral gameplay that these teams have shown us for the entire this set. Yeah, a lot of, you know, 1v1s that are coming out here. Alexei do getting a great pick on Kiver there. And looks like Alexei, as the Charger, is in a really good position to help add pressure to this left side. Um, and not quite riding the tower, but Alexei does have that Stingray ready. So uh, Zekin going to go ahead and ride the tower as Alexei is going to pop the Stingray. And Rift is able to put even more points on the board. Look at how like well a lot of these defensive positions are holding around the second checkpoint for Radiance. Even though, despite the fact that they're losing right now, they're doing a good job of making sure that this tower doesn't get past this second checkpoint with the amount of long-range weapons they have, given the fact that they can shoot down on this tower from a lot of different areas and make themselves that much more difficult to hit and that much more difficult to pin down or rift in order to snowball this game out of control, which is what has allowed Radiance to stay in this game so far. We'll see if they can start building this forward now, as Gray's currently riding the tower but it's a two down situation and that's the double dually squelchers that are down for you right now gray is going to try to get something some work done here with the craft and now in the baller is going to try to find someone that is going to get taken down and sworn by a couple of other members of rift and so now it looks like the defense for rift is going to hold at least momentarily it's kind of difficult to tell because this game has just been so back and forth there have been so many splats going either direction yeah it definitely is hard to tell like it's, uh, each team can push it over to this first checkpoint area but there's so much going on in terms of trades and uh, 1v1s, 2v1s happening that it's just kind of going back and forth. So 
right now, uh, Rift definitely has the lead and they're doing a great job at holding that as we go into this last minute of the match. Skoze gonna go ahead and pop this inkjet, getting a pick on Abito, and that means there's now three down on the side of Radiance as Rift is taking that tower yet again and pushing it onto Radiance's side of the map. So that this is just making it that much more difficult for Radiance to be able to get into a position, first of all, to be able to push the tower even to get the lead. And as much as I've, you know, complimented here Radiance for holding around the second choke point, they might actually not be able to do that as it's a two-down situation. Obito here shooting down from above onto Zekin, just trying to dive around here and gets taken down by Kipper on the other side. Erzo's on, on the baller, so it doesn't look like this tower's going to get cleared. But no, I say that, and Alexa is able to hop on for just a couple of seconds necessary in order to take care of business. Kipper goes down here on the grate, and it's two down right now for Radiance. Rift is probably going to continue pushing this, and it's going to mean that Radiance is not given an opportunity, or if they are given an opportunity, it's going to be a long shot to come back in this one. Yeah, it, right now Rift is putting on even more points. They've gotten it down to 25 here in the last 15 seconds. They are at checkpoint 3 and they are in a great position with Urza there applying pressure with that Rapid Blaster. So there are three down. It's just Kipper here trying everything he can do to stop the tower, but he unfortunately goes down as well. And great job from Rift for securing this uh, game 5. Game 5 is a reminder this is a best of 9. So we are three to two right now, and you have to get five to win. So both these teams starting to get there, starting to get a little bit more even. Alexei, 17 splats and assists, five stingrays. Second with seven armors over the course of that game as well. Uh, lots of large numbers there uh, for both of these teams, which means that they were certainly very active, even despite the fact that a large portion of that match was very low scoring. Yeah, a lot of that was back and forth, but I mean, I feel like a lot of that was trades. Um, it was just kind of constantly hit, hanging around that first checkpoint on each side of the map. Absolutely. And, you know, again, it comes down to defense. It comes down to can you keep yourselves in the game. And Rift really did. Uh, you know, they were able to come up with these plays and able to, you know, even like Skoze flanking, which I commented on, it wasn't going to be uh, effective on the offensive side was still effective on the defensive side, right? If you get a two-down situation, all of a sudden, Radiance isn't going to have as much map control. They can't move as fast in order to get back to the other side of the map and try to set up more advantageous positions for their own team. Um, so that was also massive, and that's a large part of what Rift has been doing. They've been picking apart, they've been winning a lot of these fights over the course of the map in order to make things much more even and much more neutral uh, overall in terms of this game state. But, once more, they're barely letting us talk, Rissa. It's Splat Zones, <laughs> Muscle Forge, Fitness. So we hop into Game 6. Game 6, Splat Zones. And so we saw uh, Radiance do a great job at, uh, at Game 1 Splat Zones that we saw. Uh, getting the lead right in the middle of the match. So we'll see as we come out here. Looks like Hypno's opting for the bamboo as their uh, quote-unquote long-range weapon. And um, on the other side of Rift, looks like we see a Firefin Flutterstroke coming out. So I like that. Like that as well, and already a two-down situation here. Rift is now making a three-down situation. Second steps forward to find one. Rift is looking strong. They're looking to scope all this one out of control rather quickly. It means Radiance is going to have to charge up their special stick back in here. But no, one of their armors already going down here. Uh, perhaps, once again, give her going a little bit too far forward. Couldn't really see that play, of course. But they're going to be met with four specials on the other side for Rift right now. And here they come. They're trying to charge in this zone, but the armor gets immediately bursted off of Obito. The baller comes into zone here into the one-on situation but gray a little bit too far forward without paint coverage of the rest of the team obito gets taken down by alexi rift holds on to the zone for the time being it's a good on situation for radiance last two members are alive here they have another ink armor but they can't really do much of anything you notice hypnos is super far behind now on that charger and all of a sudden we're in knockout territory for radiance alexi gets another shot and that might have just been the dagger to steal the deal for rift yeah, this is a great position for Alexei to be in as that Charger player. I mean, we are all the way down to 10 as Alexei is going to go down here with four seconds on the board. So Radiance knows they need to try and paint the zone with everything they can. It looks like there's two down on the side of Rift here as finally Radiance, wow, they did, they pulled out everything they could. They know, they knew they needed to rush to the zone to get it to even just have a shot at this. So they did just that with Rift only have two, having two points left. 
how frantic was that zone it was like everyone is just trying to dump as much as you can possible and we're not even two minutes into the match already that's how close this game was to being decided you'll notice the special rotations for both these teams already coming up as radiance now has all their specials and rift finds the engage that when it counts they're able to just launch all their specials right under zone super well courted by them in order to take back here and now they're going to start tearing down through their penalty once more yeah, I love that Rift had all their specials ready. They were able to push in together with those specials. Though there are three down, it's just Urza here. Urza gonna get called out by Obito. And uh, right now, the Rift is in a position now where they're gonna have to go ahead and have to regroup as Radiance is in control of the zone. And we see Obito here acting as a great example of everyone caning around, getting their specials ready for that defensive uh, push that Rift is gonna have. Oh, the armor doesn't come quite in time for Alexa in order to find that. Now the Suction Bomb Launcher is coming out here to buy more time, and Rift takes back control of the zone once more. Alexa is just absolutely popping off and hitting the shots when they matter the most for Rift. And now, once more, they're wearing through their penalty. It's another two-down situation for Radiance, and Radiance is going to have to reset in order to come back in here. But again, we're going to see the same thing continue to get played out here. The specials are all going to get charged up, and then they're all going to rush in, and it's all going to be a matter of execution in those clutch moments. Yeah, absolutely. As we see Hypnos having these missiles ready, waiting for their teammates to have some more specials to be in a position to push in. Hypnos going to go ahead and pop those missiles. We see armor popped on the side of Radiance as Alexei is going to go down on the side of Rift here. So that's going to help allow Radiance to get another pick on Skoze and get in a position to push up and get the zone. Uh, Urza here tried to get a, a sneak in, get that pick on Hypnos, but Hypnos did a good thing at backing up, getting the pick on Urza. And now... Uh, there's Alexei going to go ahead and go down uh, one more time on the side of Rift here, so Rift is going to have to get in a position now to regroup as Radiance actually has no more penalty left. Rift needs to go now here as Radiance, once, as you mentioned, already out of penalty and now they're in knockout territory, but Urza steps a little bit too far forward and gets taken down by Obito here. That's one of the things Trislaw should best at. Now Skoze goes down as well here. Radiance is about to come back in this match if Rift isn't careful. They have to engage now. They have to find the paint on his own and I don't think they're going to. One tries to slip on a wave. That second is going to go down nonetheless. The paint covers on zone and Radiance goes to set point. Wow. That was, I mean, Rift getting that all the way down to two, that's insane to, at, at one point of it. And then that comeback that Radiance was able to have, they did a great job of almost at just like, they like took advantage of the time that they had left and they positioned really well to act defensively there. <sighs> I, I see the comments, K-pop breathe, and I'm trying to, but it is very <laughs> difficult when I'm given matches like that. Uh, what is going on here? Rift oftentimes is rather dominant for the majority of the game, but as a, a quote that I like to call back from a while ago from Hitzel, Splatoon is not about the sum of all your, your performances in the game, it's about your best performance. And that best performance for Radiance came at the very end of the game, and what net, nets them the knockout victory. I mean, oh. Again, there, there's so much to unpack in these games, and we don't even get the time to do it. We're already queued up for Tower Control and Anchovy games. These teams are just moving so fast at the speed of sound, and it's impossible to commentate over everything. Ready up right away. They are ready to get this ball rolling as we're going to go ahead and go into Tower Control and Anchovy games. Looks like we're opting to see Hypno sticking to that Bamboozler here for Tower Control. And then on the side of uh, Rift, uh, Alexei opting to pick for that uh, Splatter Scope. Uh, with the Stingray, so I like that pick as well. Um, I'm interested to see how each team plays out here as we see an armor already ready on the side of Rift. Armor already ready. The lucky thing is that we're not going to see a ton of Stingrays, or at least those aren't going to be the focus here so far in this match. The armor does come out right now for Rift, and it's going to mean the two-down situation for Radiance, making a three-down situation, making a complete wipe. Rift, once more, has complete control of the map early. Let's see if they can turn this into advantage, but they're going to need to stay sharp for the entirety of this game if they don't knock it out here. Yeah, I love that we're seeing Zekin on the tower painting everything possible to have uh, that they're special ready as we see the stingray we have the armor popped and with urza up here in the front has a booyah bomb ready to use as well so radiance here trying to pop the specials that they do have as uh rift has already pushed it all the way down to 36 that's a really really strong push and they're still pushing it even more though there are three down 
uh, on the side of Rift here. Last one is going to go ahead. Last member alive goes ahead and jumps out. So that was a really good move there. As now Radiance is starting to push up, try and paint everything and get their specials ready for a push. But actually what Radiance is really trying to do right now is they're trying to make sure that they know where Rift is. At the end of the day, they want to make sure that they can find the engage onto Rift before Rift can find the engage onto Radiance. And you'll notice that's already happening. It's a two-dent situation with that income or pop tier as Obito steps forward to find one, get the assist onto the other. It's going to be the first checkpoint cleared for Radiance. And once more, Rift is going to need to hold this for a longer period of time if they want to keep this up. We'll see if they can do it here as Alexi starts to charge up for this GG Ray. Yeah, Alexei having that ray ready and uh, gonna go ahead and wait for the missiles to end and now gonna go ahead and pop that uh, stingray and now there's only two up on the side of Radiance here though as um, as all these specials are coming out here. So right now they did get 41 points on the board. They are on the tower right now. Looks like they're gonna go ahead and try and get these jumps in though as Gray and Hypnos were called out in their jumps and looks like that's gonna be the end of Radiance's first push here. So back and forth, in a lot of these cases, it's almost impossible to tell exactly what's going to happen there. But the jumps come in, and they're able to get taken care of and cleaned up by Rift. Again, that second checkpoint holds, which is going to be absolutely critical for Rift. The question is, can they stay here for long enough? Can they keep this state for long enough? We've seen this happen in two games now, where Radiance has come back towards the very end. Uh, again, it's going to be a matter of Rift holding on to this position or holding on to this game state as we'll notice Alexa is just trying to be much more passive, much more safe given the current state of the game. Yeah, Alexa knows that there are two down on their team as they're trying to uh, wait out the specials that Radiance has here. Um, looks like one member, I didn't quite see who that was, of Rift is going to go ahead and jump back. I think that was a smart move to go ahead and save their special. Gray, it looks like Gray's trying to juggle the tower, maybe bait some members of Rift out. And those two are down on the side of Radiance here. Gray going to pop that armor um, for themselves and Hypnos, but Gray going to get a good trade though with Urza as uh, Rift is now back on the tower again and going to start pushing it on Radiance's side. The fight was actually massive for Rift as they're able to walk away with a three down situation on the other side. And actually, I say that I believe we've had a disconnect in this game in four on Radiance. I don't believe there's going to be a replay at this stage in the game. And so, uh, very likely, Rift is going to be able to walk away with this victory here unless something goes massively wrong. They're just going to continue pushing this tower here. You'll notice once more, the three members of Radiance can't quite do much except we'll watch this from afar. The Buya Bomb pushes them back even further. The specials are coming online here for Radiance. We'll see if they can find at least one or two, but no, one going down here. Uh, and Gray is just around this tower as it continues pushing forward. Three down situations. Gray tries to dash away, but is going to get taken down nonetheless. And that is going to be the disconnect victory going in favor of Rift to make this set even closer and extending the series. Oh man, you hate to see it when there's a disconnect right towards the end, so you know, it still counts, but um, man, Radiance was definitely get, putting in a good fight, trying to be patient, and uh, but Rift, I mean, they secured the lead early on, they kept the pressure up there, and they were still pushing the tower even with four members of Radiance up there towards the middle, towards the end. Yeah, I mean, again, well done there. I think one thing to note there is that I mentioned that Rift needed to, you know, stay sharp for the remainder of the game. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to know if they would have or not if it was a, you know, four up situation. Um, but as I was mentioning, you know, that specific moment where I was calling about that white, I, I, I don't remember if Kiver was actually uh, still in the game or not at that stage, but um, that was still very massive there. Uh, because if Radiance would have gotten the right one Rift and that fight would have gone the other direction, there's a very good chance that that tower would have gotten back to the second checkpoint and it would have been just once more a absolutely critical play uh, in order to try to take care of some stuff there. Uh, I believe we're going to have a lobby reset here, so it's going to be a moment, and finally we might be able to breathe, Rissa. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they, these two teams were like, no, we're ready, we're, t we're doing this. So... Oh. Whew. Four to these three. Been yeah, these have been really good games. They've been really close. I mean, you can see both of the teams here working to show us everything they've got, and... I mean, the score says it all, I think. The score really does say it all. Four to three. Radiance has been edging out when it matters most. And that's why they've been able to walk away with one more game victory. Uh, but now with that disconnect victory, we'll see uh, what kind of happens here. If if, if the uh, internet for everyone can hopefully hold up, you know, knock on wood. Uh, don't want to have this stuff uh, get completely haywire. But, um, yeah, I mean, 
we're gonna have to see you know can can radians close it out here uh again they only need to win one of the next two games uh and the next one is going to be their own map pick uh which is worth noting and that is going to be splat zones on inkblot art academy which i feel like is going to be a coin flip here uh can yeah. very much go quickly either direction yeah i could see that because i mean it's such a short map and anything can happen that everything can turn so fast since that plat area is just so close to the spawn yeah absolutely um you know the plat area being close to the spawn is going to be all about and, it, and it's you know inkblot archive is one of those maps where it's it is easier to set up for that lockout situation if you're able to find uh those you know areas onto the plat right if you're able to find the ink coverage if you're able to find all of this um in order to make sure that your opponent can't actually reach the zone um so, and, and that's something that I really anticipate both of these teams very much are going to go for. I imagine Rift is going to be much bolder in terms of what uh, situations they decide to try to take control of the Radiance plan. Uh, but I would not be, you know, shocked to see Radiance try to return the favor on the other side. Um, definitely going to be interesting to see exactly, you know, how, how this one plays out. Um, because it can be very coin flippy. Um, and, and here's the other thing that's worth noting. These players all know each other so very well. I mean... You talk about Alliance Rogue, which is one of those teams that was so dominant for so long uh, in Splatoon. Uh, all, like, four members of that original Alliance Rogue roster that is completely dominant in terms of French Splatoon, that is completely dominant in terms... Or maybe not completely dominant, but has made large appearances on the international stage as well. Two players on either side of these maps. And so, um, certainly, black bragging rights are on the line in this match in particular uh, between these two teams. And you know it's gonna be interesting to see exactly who comes out on top yeah i mean they've played with each other so much uh, in terms of alliance rogue and in, in terms of pickups so i think that's something good to know not only how to play with someone but also to play against them so that's definitely something to factor into that yeah absolutely but again these players have so much experience against one another, right? Even mm -hmm. if these rosters haven't had as much experience, the players themselves have had so much experience facing one another, playing with one another. They probably understand each other's mindsets and the plays that they're about to go for, the things that they're trying to think about. Uh, and that's why I think it's kind of interesting to see some of these more unusual picks, right? Gray playing the Crafted Blaster is something that we saw a handful from him, but seeing it come out in this much in this set has certainly been massive. Uh, we're already back in the lobby. We're already back into the game. It is Splat Zone's Inkblot Art Academy for Game 8, Radiance versus Rift. Again, Radiance needs one more to close out this set. And we're going to go ahead and see both of the team's weapons here. Hypno sticking with that Bamboozler, Alexi sticking with that Fire Fin Splatter Scope, four zones. And we're going to see both teams here coming out, working to get specials ready as usual. Uh, Gray going to go ahead and pop that armor, though. Right here, right away, uh, Rift has gotten first control of the zone, and there is one down on the side of Radiance here as uh, hip, uh, Radiance is in a position where they're going to have to back up and regroup as these specials come out uh, from the side of Rift. So once again, in these neutral situations, it seems like Rift is coming out on top, but now it's a three-down situation for them, and Radiance is going to take back control. How much further can they decide to push on forward here? And there's actually being much more of a nuisance here. Popping the inkjet as well, just saying, no, I am here, you have to respect me, or at least you have to swim away from me. Uh, Erza looks like going to go down nonetheless here, but buys enough time for the rest of Rift to come back in on this map. The three-down situation for Radiance, it's going to mean the French team in purple takes back control of the zone. Yeah, I love that Urza popped that inkjet acted as a distraction because now that allowed his teammates to be able to push up around him and get the zone back. So Rift, again, has the zone, has no penalty, and they're going to go ahead and start counting down uh, their, their zone points here. But looks like I see three specials ready on the side of Rift as uh, those missiles, the armor, and the rain is going to pop out here. Inkjet as well, and now Radiance is in a good position to get the zone, but unfortunately one goes down as they try to push in. Try to push in, and now it's a two-down situation for Radiance. They're not able to find this, and now Rift is getting scarily close to the knockout situation. They want to go to their map pick in this game, 9, and with 25 ticks of the timer, they're looking likely to do so. They, Radiance need, really needs to find a well-coordinated play here, but they have to be careful as Jose. Look at how further forward, and already that Inkjet comes high in the sky in order to try to take down one of these members and make the push forward from Radiance even slower and weaker. That is going to be the Ink Armor. Popped out of Rift here. They try to get the Ink on zone, and Radiance somehow finds the Ink on his own without taking away any of the members of Rift, but 
now the punish comes back the other direction as Rift is able to capitalize. It's a three down situation for Radiance, and that was played beautifully by Rift, but the game extends for a little while longer. Yeah, I love that we're seeing uh, Skoze and Urza just acting as distraction in these uh, pivotal moments because that just allows their teammates to be able to push up around them and just add all of that pressure as we saw that exact thing happen. And now Rift has three specials ready. They are ready to act defensively as Radiance knows they need to get into the zone here. Ray gonna uh, push up, act aggressively with that end up, getting two picks along with it. And now with two down on the side of Rift, uh, the zone is going to go ahead and go into Radiance's favor. Now Gray painting around all of this purple ink and uh, having armor ready yet again. Uh, Radiance is finally in a really good position with no penalty to keep this up. If you're a Radiance fan right now, you can really take a sigh of relief, right? Uh, that was well done there. They finally have control of the zone and they're looking to push forward. They have to be careful because here comes the engage. Ink armor met on both sides. And this goes ink jet goes high in the sky, but actually it's a double ink jet now, and it is going to mean Kipper gets taken down. Loss of control right now for Radiance is a student situation for them, as now it looks like Rift is going to be able to maintain control with the amount of squids that they still have up on the map, and that is going to be the case. Rift takes back control of the zone. It's going to be the penalty applied once more to Radiance, making this even more difficult, but the game will still continue you for long enough and I imagine we're gonna have a nail-biting finish here assuming that Radiance can take back control here because Rift is starting to get knockout territory once more. Yeah Rift has their penalty down to about 25 almost to 20 here as uh, Radiance gets a nice pick on um, the Carter player on the side of uh, Rift and finally Radiance has gone into the zone here they've painted it yet again and they are in a position as they make one member of Rift jump out as well so there are two down on the side of Rift here uh, looks like Rift is now on the other side of this, having to work to be in a position to be able to push back in. Rift, you have to stay strong for the majority and for the duration of this game. Radiance has come so close to seal away two victories already from you. They might do it here to seal the set away as well. 30 ticks of the timer left to go here, but only to the four-point mark is what they need. Kipper is able to find one of the legs which is absolutely massive. That means the, the slap on launcher has also been taken down. The uh, timer is still going down here as its own case captain once more. Two-down situation for Radiance. That means Kipper is going to have to try to back away, try to stall for time here, wait for the, some of these members to come back in, but no, the zone is flipped back in control of Rift. They're able to take back control here, and now with 25 seconds left to go on the game clock, Rift is in a rather strong position. It's going to take much more for Radiance to come back, although we've seen it before. Yeah, I love that Alexa is positioned here on this middle portion as the charger. This is a great position to be in. Uh, now, it's just going to be, you know, what's going to happen here? There's one down on the side of Radiance right now, as Radiance is doing everything they can in these last five seconds to try and paint over the zone. We're seeing specials popping left and right, and Radiance wasn't quite able to paint over the zone, so this is going to be going to uh, Rift for this Black Zones map. Game 9, everybody. The French Civil War goes to a Game 9 at the Transatlantic Splatoon League. Uh, my heart is still pounding. I don't even know what to think of this. I don't know which way it's going to go. This has been much closer than I think a lot of people might have anticipated in Radiance right now. You're looking a little bit more shaky for a team that we thought might have been the clear favorites in the European division. Yeah, Radiance, I mean, Radiance did do a really good job at being patient on the first two Splat Zones map that we saw them on. Um, that one, it just seemed like the way that Skoze and Urza were able to just act as distractions, act, act as aggression, aggressive distractions was really good for them. And I mean, we were talking about that. The map is so short that stuff like that can really happen. Tweet at all your friends, ping them in the Discord server. You're not going to want to miss the end of this one. It is game nine between these two teams. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a moment to tweet that for myself. Um, join now. Twitch.tv slash kbot underscore 273. All right. Uh, cool. So make sure you get them in here. And actually, these teams might be taking a little bit of a sigh of relief and a breather, which is something that we have not seen yet. Alexi has yet to start the lobby in this game nine uh, because they know how crucial this can be. By the way, in these sets, this is the only time that you're ever going to see this team in tassel competition. If Rift pulls off the upset here, um, or arguably the upset, that would be absolutely massive in terms of securing themselves a potential spot when we get closer and closer to playoffs. Yeah, this is, they know this is the, it for both of them. This is, uh, 
game nine. Is this the first game nine that we've had for Tassel? Second, actually. Uh, Second. Starburst okay. versus Slaughterhouse went to a game That's nine. Right. Um, That's this right. This is this is the first game nine in Europe, if that counts. Yeah. Um, okay. So the second game nine overall. Um, yeah, I I don't even know what to think, guys. I'm sorry. I'm I'm conserving my energy now, so that when we get into game, I can bring that to you there. Uh, one thing that we can bring a little bit more energy to. Tower Control Schellendorf Institute is the Rift map pick. What do you think about that one, Reza? I think, I know, uh, I personally, you know, playing on this map is really difficult as a shooter, for just for me. So I love that they're picking this as their pick and they're confident with it because it's not something that we get to see a lot. So I like that they're confident that this is the pick they want to play this. And they know from what we've seen in their past Tower Control pick, um, they have their great positioning. They're going to be ready to get in their positions and have the confidence to try and win this. Game nine. Here we are, everybody. It's the French Civil War between Rift and Radiance. Of course, Radiance in the yellow, Rift in the purple. And we already see the armor coming out of Zekin to try to maintain a little bit more for Rift in this early aggression, these openings from Rift. But it backfires in this case. They go two down, about to be three down. And it's going to mean Radiance gets the first push in the game. Yeah, Radiance here doing uh, great by getting uh, almost a, a, full, a full life on the side of Rift. So we're seeing Kiver popping up with that inkjet. We're having the rain pop up here. A gray pop that armor. Hypnos has that stingray on the tower. As they've already pushed it past that first checkpoint, they are on that second checkpoint trying to juggle it, trying to get it past it. I mean, they are coming out here full force with full momentum. Uh, they did They did go down, Radiance did go down off the tower, but they were able to get it past that second checkpoint, which is really bad tonight. Really down to magical here. Now it's another two done situation for Rift here. Radius is gonna continue pushing on forward. Rift did, has not been able to find the collapse from the tower that they absolutely need. We're already down to this third checkpoint. Two down on both sides, and now finally it looks like Rift is able to take care of business. Of course, there's one up in the inkjet, up in the air, around the area, but that's gonna expire, and Kiver jumps back. They're gonna make sure that this tower tries to stay on this side of the map, and they do with Zekin going down. Radiance is just continuing to maintain control of the pace of this game. And now look, Alexi, you're trying to find this cross map sniped on the tower but right now it's just not working because there's almost always somebody on top of you here putting pressure onto that charger Rift, radius is playing this so well but now it's a two-down situation and now perhaps rift can try to translate this into push but no radiance is relentless they find another one here obito goes down nonetheless but still neither team is going to maintain or try to find that advantage right now and that is going to go in favor of radius yeah, we saw a lot of uh, picks going on there in mid uh, as this fight for mid is working out here. Rift here gonna go ahead and grab the tower. Uh, we're seeing that inkjet pop from Skoze as they get uh, help get, get a pick with uh, Andre. And now Obito here on this top left glass uh, trying to get in a position to stop the tower as they kind of wait for their teammates. Now two are down on the side of Rift. One down on the side of Radiance here. There's just so many trades happening back and forth as it's just a bloodbath here for the tower as Radiance does not want to let Rift get any more points on the board. It's another three down situation and now Radiance is going to once more maintain control of the pace of the game. But ho oh, ho, Alexi takes that one down onto Grey. You didn't see that one coming even though Alexi has maintained this position for a large part of this game so far. Again, the Rift counter pick here. We'll have to see if they can convert as now it looks a little bit promising. The L3D though goes down of Skoze and the inkjet here on the side is going to mean that this push gets immediately broken up from Rift. Any semblance of a push is going to be completely lost saving their specials for a future push here or saving their specials for the re-engage they look for this onto Radiance who right now is looking for an engage of their own. Yeah, right, uh, Rift had to get a lot of repositioning in. Um, we're now seeing Alexi popping that Stingray trying to stop any any ounce of a push that Radiance is trying to get back in. I think Rift is doing a great job at trying to stop these pushes here, not trying to let it go any further than this. But the, just the momentum that Radiance has here is just really hard to contest. Um, we're seeing Skoze popping that into opting to try and get a pick with that uh, inkjet and armor, but there's just so much going on back and forth as these specials come out. 
Touches are coming out here once more. Radiance maintains control of the pace of the game here, and Rift can't really do much except watch this tower go by. The, uh, the completely locking down this flank from behind now, and Gray's the only one around this tower. is able to find a pick on Ares, a former teammate, and is able to find the one on Dezekin here as well. It's going to be the third checkpoint cleared for Radiance. It's a two-down situation right now, actually, for both teams. Hypnos is running the tower right now. It's Gose trying to find the ink of the tower and is able to find Hypnos. Now, Obito's the last one alive for Radiance, and it looks like it's going to get shut down at the five-point mark. Rift has a chance, but they have to take this tower back to the complete opposite side of the map. They have two checkpoints that stand in their way, and it would be one hell of a comeback. Yeah, in the last 40 seconds of this match, they have so Rift has so many points they need to put on the board here, but with the way these matches been going on, I you know, anything can happen here as we go into the last 30 seconds. We're seeing three specials online though. Unfortunately, the armor is gonna go down on the side of Rift. We're seeing the inkjet popped up from Skoze. Alexei does have that Stingray ready, but is opting not to use it quite yet. Unfortunately, two go down on the side of Rift here though, as they were trying to work it past uh, that first and second checkpoint area. Rift, what map control did you have? It almost doesn't even matter though, because now it's a three down situation. They have the ability to make a push here. Will it be the one that matters? There is going to be plenty of time for Radiance to come back in here. They can buy their time. They have two checkpoints that they have to work through here. And it's going to be that the engage is not going to come for a long period of time. I do not expect to see it for the time being, but that means that Rift is going to be able to set up for time. The Incomer is going to come out here. But now, once again, Radiance not even thinking about engaging it for the time being. And now, once more, Rift is starting to spread out a little bit more. You see Arizo trying to find where some of these members are, but now we see we turn our attention back to the tower. The Stingray is there. You see a lot of these members for Rift right now swarming around. There's no one around right now for uh, Radiance. Kiver's the closest one to the tower and needs to step on forward. Obito is able to find one on the second now. Kiver finds the last one. There's an ink bath all around the tower right now. It's going to be the double on Radiance. They lose the lead. What are you doing? Rift takes it. Oh my goodness. That, the last 30 seconds was able to push it past the lead, past five points. Game nine. Are you kidding me? That's, that's insane from Rift. Wow. I stood up out of my chair, guys. I, I, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, because I was like yelling up there somewhere. <laughs> oh, I have what a cat was and that? I was just like, ah! that was crazy. That's, a, I mean, that is a game nine right there if I've ever seen one. Rift takes the set takes the last three games in the set, as you see on the right side of your screen. <laughs> what? What did I watch? <laughs> just... Powers, Powers right. What did I just watch? Yeah, we're just here speechless. Wow. We got, we got quite the show there. And Rift, I mean, they showed us the last three games. They said... No, we're going to take this. We're turning this around. And that's exactly what they did. That was insane. That is what they did. Rift. Rift only had one come from behind victory. And it was the final game of the set. Shows you probably the story of the majority of this set. I mean, look at exactly... Again, look at who took what maps. Radiance was starting out strong. But Rift was finally able to have the endurance to come back in the end. And take the set overall. The French Civil War goes in favor of Rift. Um, and Radiance has been excited to show their strength in the Transatlantic Splatoon League. We haven't had a ton of matches in Europe, but that very well could be pivotal in terms of who gets the first seed. By the way, we're not considering where Freeze is in any of this. Mm -hmm. So Freeze has the potential as well to be a very strong team here. And it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens in the remaining three weeks of the Transatlantic Splatoon League season. Uh, we're gonna have to save analysis on the last game for another day, Rissa, because yeah, I just I, I can't process anything right now. <laughs> that um, was a lot. That was a lot. That was absolutely a lot. Um, and so from that, folks, that's going to do it for the Transatlantic Splatoon League's week three. Of course, uh, these vods will be going up in 24 hours on the Transatlantic Splatoon League YouTube channel. You can literally just search Transatlantic Splatoon League. Uh, you can also go to tinyurl.com slash tassel hyphen YT. Uh, and if you're interested to follow updates on Twitter for upcoming matches and the like, and the next time Rift plays, the next time Radiance plays, you'll be able to do that at tassel underscore SPL on Twitter. 
Uh, Rissa, it's been an absolute pleasure to commentate with you today. Any other closing remarks? Uh, no closing remarks for me. I'm just uh, recovering from that entire set that we watched together. So uh, it's been a pleasure. I've been happy to be here. Has been a pleasure. Uh, that was that was quite the set, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, I'm going to play the more calming music for you as we head towards the outro. Um, Y'all... Have a good one. Uh, as mentioned, please stay tuned to the Transatlantic Splatoon League Twitter account at Tassel underscore SPL for future updates on the league. Uh, so you don't miss matches like this. Why would you want to miss more matches like this? Again, there's a team in the European division that we didn't see today that could be just as strong as these two teams. And they were so close, so neck and neck. Only two teams from the European division will make it into playoffs at the end. And it's going to be one heck of a ride. Everyone, that's going to do it for us and for the Transatlantic Splatoon League Week 3. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope to see you around on future broadcasts. Of course, you can follow the both of us on Twitter. Those are linked below. Rift takes it over Radiance in the French Civil War in a nine-game series, 5-4 to four at the very end, turning on the Jets. Everyone have a good rest of your weekend. We hope to see you around.